Okay, this shit's rolling. Thank you. That shit's rolling. Welcome to episode 31 of Tim Talk, the podcast about the DC animated universe co-created by Bruce Tim. I'm Chris Lord. I'm Kevin Dexter. And today we're talking Batgirl. Yeah. First proper appearance of Batgirl. So uh, obviously we had Barbara back in his Heart of Steel, mm-hmm. right? And uh, now she does the full transformation. Yeah. Pretty damn good episodes. Mm-hmm. There's also, I don't know if you noticed this, there was a, a small node to Hardak in the episode. There was? Yeah, there, it was... Because I know they, they – we're going to jump into this in a second. Yeah. But they show Two-Face in in shadow beforehand, and I'm like, oh, he's the villain. And then when Bruce breaks into his kind of hideout, they show his security system, and it's the same color scheme as Hardak oh. with the same big red circle. God, you're right. And I'm like, didn't even oh, notice that. is Two-Face the villain or is Hardak the villain? It's Hardak's back. Yeah. Ooh. And then he wasn't, and I was a little upset. Yeah. Oh, I also I love that building too because it's like well obviously Two Face would be in there like it's it's like a brick building and then a wooden decrepit building yeah in the same building <laughs> yeah you know everything comes in twos it comes in twos yeah it's again it's it's like the amusement parks like guys we know the Joker's there just shut him down yeah but uh, do we want to do bat news really quick was yeah. there any bat news was there I don't know oh well yeah there is bat news um I sent it out on to I think our Twitter. Yeah, that they announced the casting for Batman and Harley Quinn, the animated movie. Oh, yeah. It's coming out. So, um, yeah, so it's Melissa Rauch is going to be doing the voice of Harley. Best known from Big Bang Theory exactly. as Bernadette. Bernadette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Howard's wife. Yeah. Um, and then, it's been a while since I've watched Big uh, Bang Theory. Paget Brewster is going to be Poison Ivy. So the, those two have changed. You know who Paget Brewster is? Not a clue. So uh, this will be my one of plugs later, but Thrilling Adventure Hour, which we, right, we, we went, went to. to. Yeah, she's Sadie of Frank and Sadie Doyle. Yeah, the, the okay, drunken I remember, I remember paranormal mm-hmm. uh, adventurers or whatever. Yeah, she yeah. was funny. She is absolutely one of my celebrity crushes. Like she <laughs> is so impossibly charming, both like that character on on the uh, Adventure Hour, but also just like in everything. Yeah, I absolutely love her. So I was really excited to see that. But uh, but I mean, so we got Kevin Costner, not Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner as Batman. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Conroy. Conroy. Lauren Lester is back as Robin. Cool. Um, so a uh, da, 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 what would have been oh, a featurette came out this week that was kind of talking about it, and so it's not it's like officially not part of the DCAU, although it's like kind of the character designs and it's half the voices, and I think they're driving a version of the original Batmobile actually. Okay, based on the featurette, but it's more like inspired by it. Um, I'm still super excited for it though. Like, it looks like it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, and I'm ready for the DC animated movies to not be in that universe anymore. Oh, Cause yeah. Cause I you... just watched Judas Contract. Yeah, because you got to go to WonderCon. I went to WonderCon. It's now been a week since I've been at WonderCon. Oh. Um, conventions are always wonderful. Mm-hmm. If you've never been to a big con, I highly recommend it because yeah. it's just like people that you love are all like – all the people that you want to hang out with are just there. It's yeah. a great community. Well, and I think WonderCon is kind of proof that you don't necessarily have to go to San Diego Comic Con. I mean, that's that's the big one. That's yeah, like probably the best one to go to. But I mean, I've been to WonderCon last year too. It's great. I've heard New York Comic Con is awesome. New York, I love New York Con. This I think you've been. New yeah. York. I I think I would rank it San Diego, New York, WonderCon. Okay, yeah. But I mean, I think that the community is getting strong enough now, and I think San Diego is getting so crazy that I feel like the other cons are kind of getting stronger mm-hmm. oh bit. absolutely yeah uh just because it's almost impossible to get tickets for san diego now. as we know mm-hmm. saturday yeah oh, god 9 a.m uh, we'll be on there 9 a.m trying <laughs> i feel so bad for those east coasters <laughs> oh wait no what's well, it like noon for them oh right it's the other way I yeah forget but anyone in hawaii that really sucks oh yeah yeah uh um, or internationally i suppose too yeah that's, yeah, that's also <laughs> very true um yeah, so at WonderCon, they showed the premiere of Judas Contract, and it was, it was fine. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, ha- I've read some reviews, and people just absolutely love it, mm-hmm. and I kind of see why. They're, they're charming moments, but I think the Teen Titans series did it so much better. That's such a great like, arc in yeah, the show. Yeah, like season two of Teen Titans is, it's, uh, it, they do it so well. 
it's i would say it's my second i I think the last season of teen titans is the best Mm -hmm. uh but the tara storyline like any of my friends from early high school or middle middle school know that i had a very deep emotional bruise watching watching tara fall it was hard and to it watch. Hurts. Like she's such a great character like, yeah. in that show too. Yeah, and they, and it was my first like big like cartoon death. Yeah. Not even just like T V death to yeah. deal with. I didn't know how to deal with it. And it was just, Wait, just did she weird. actually die? She like encased herself in stone. Oh, that's right. And they she never come back later? So the, <laughs> the bit my my biggest problem with Teen Titans, uh, they gave one episode of season six. And apparently they did three more episodes in comic form that I haven't found yet. Okay. <clears throat> but they did the first episode where Tara comes back and they fight a new villain. And also Slade is back. Hmm. Um, and it ends with Tara. Tara is now like a schoolgirl. She doesn't have powers. She doesn't remember anything. Okay. But Beast Boy remembers. So Beast Boy is chasing her around. And there's like an emotional spark that comes back up. And Aww. then the episode ends when Slade comes in. And then there's no more Teen Titans after that. Wait, that's just, that's, that's the end. That's the end. They end on a cliffhanger for a new season that never came out. Oh, I didn't know that. And I was so frustrated. And so you have to imagine how excited I was when Teen Titans Go was first announced. Yeah. When they said they're going to bring back Teen Titans, and I'm like, oh my god, finally! And then it's this chibi bullshit. But it's not um, the same. Yeah, it's, not even it's, close it's like to it's same. like more tongue in cheek and kind of silly. Yeah, right. It's much yeah. more child. Teen Titans. Uh, it's, it's still not for like an adult audience, but it, it, it was a little more mature and it kind of made the audience think a little bit. It didn't dumb down the audience at all. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed like the team times go was kind of more like, it's fun. It's yeah. an adventure. We're uh, whimsical. Yeah. But, but oh. Judas contract, um, great intro of Starfire. I think that the was first, she not, already? uh, not in that world. The, the okay, first five minutes, uh, so far is, is the, is the battle where Starfire comes to earth. And that is awesome. Okay. Um, it's a fun little moment. And then Beast Boy is kind of written weird. He's like kind of the, peop- the people that you hate. He's, I guess, social influencer. Oh. Yeah. I know how much I you hate that. that. I hate that word influencer so much. Uh, and they like know their audience too well at this point because they made a very blatant Kevin Smith joke. Not even just Kevin Smith. Uh, Beast Boy is, an inv- is invited to a convention to be on Kevin Smith's panel. Oh my god! And uh, you can imagine how like the nerds uh, at a convention must have felt when that was happening. Pandering. Yeah, half of them were like, "Oh, that's us." They're talking about us, and the other half were just like, "Oh my god, uh, you can't no. do this." No. Uh, but Tara was Tara was good. Um, Raven was written pretty well. I liked her. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, the weird kind of story between Nightwing and Starfire. Okay. Like the subplot is them moving in together and like, what is it like not being in Titan's Tower? Like, oh, I don't know. This is weird. Mm. Uh, yeah, I I really haven't <clears throat> loved all the what did you call it? Like the new Fifty Two continuity movies, right? The ongoing ones, everything since War. Yeah, I really haven't loved them that much. I've always felt they've been just kind of half assed. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen Justice League Dark, which I want to watch. That, yeah, I, I like a lot yet. of the characters that are in mm-hmm. that. But even that, they're like, oh, let's put Batman in there too because we have to. Yeah. Because what if someone who doesn't know Zatanna or Constantine wants to watch it? They're both so cool. I know. You don't need Batman. They're cool on their own. Yeah. But, and I also think they're just kind of rushing it right now. Like, even in this one. Yeah. Because uh, I remember watching Killing Joke, and there were, there were animation bloops that I, that I caught. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> this wasn't as bad. But still, like, you can see the quality drop, especially since, like, All-Star Superman or even Superman Elite is so yeah. well done. Well, I think that at a certain point they had they were doing movies with a distinct style for a while, mm-hmm. and then at a certain point they just dropped that and like we're just gonna do this very generic look. And I just don't. Well, I don't, I think I don't like it. Part of it was because of the popularity of Young Justice, and I don't know if they like brought over anim- like some animators from I, that. I, I mean, I think even Young Justice has a better style and is better animated than this. Mm-hmm. Oh, it is, but it, it's roughly the same. Yeah. You can see Ish. the aspects they pulled from that I, animation style. I, I feel like um, oh, Red Hood is kind of closer to the animation style of Young Justice a little bit. Mm-hmm. But that's also like a much better movie. Yeah. And I think it came out before Young Justice. Right? Uh, it did, yeah. Because um, it's like 08, Bruce Greenwood like reprised his voice as Batman when they did Young oh, Justice. Right, right, yeah. Right. He's yeah. Like, I. In a different universe, we might have had Bruce Greenwood do live action Batman, which I would have loved to see. <laughs> do you know who he 
Uh, no. He's Captain Pike in the Star Trek movies. Oh, okay. I love him. I, I remember watching him in 13 Days, which is a really good movie about the Cuban Missile Crisis. Okay. I watched it as a kid. I don't know why. In the theater, and I really loved it, and I've always kind of loved him since then. So he's like, he's in Star Trek. I was even happier. He's hmm. Batman. He's back. He's back. I'm Batman. Voldemort's back. Yeah. Woo. But, uh, but yeah, that's my, my quickie review. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll watch it at some point. I'm, yeah. I think I have... I'm cu- I, no, I'm not quite caught up. I haven't seen Dark, but other than mm-hmm. that, I'm, I'm caught up. So. Oh, and sorry, the biggest news from WonderCon, I texted you about this. We finally have every episode of Static Shock on DVD. Oh my god, that's right. Yes, yes. I had forgotten about so, that. So two years from now, when we finally get to Static, we have them. Oh my god. See, th- these are the reasons to love comic book conventions. Yeah. Look how much easier they've made. I would say our lives. I mean, it's really your life, because I would have put you on that task of finding <laughs> those episodes. Yes. I was so uh, excited. I know. I, I am excited to get to those. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, we're actually, we're, we're getting pretty far. Like, we're almost done with the first official season. <laughs> the first season of the first show. I know. But, but that's 65 episodes. I know. That's this pretty is, good. This is that's probably the good. longest stint. Yeah. And one, um, we'll one of the first notes I had about this episode itself, uh, Shadow of the Bat, really well animated. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like I'm just very conscious of it now because we had so many really bad animated ones, but this looks great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was done by Spectrum this week. Yeah. Did did Spectrum <clears throat> do, do you remember, who did, um, if you're so smart, why aren't you rich? I think that was Spectrum. Okay, yeah, because yeah. that always stands in my head as, like, one of the best animated mm-hmm. episodes, and, and this one absolutely does, too. But, I mean, these these are good episodes. I don't think they're quite as good as Robin's Reckoning, so they're, they don't have the same emotional impact, Right, I'd say. Um, and they're also, the characters have different kind of backstory. I mean, I obviously have different backstories, but yeah. they have different motives for what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. And it, I mean, it's, it's like most of the two-part episodes. The, the first part is just lots of setup, and the second part is kind of mostly action. Mm-hmm. Some really, like one particularly really good set piece in the second episode, too, Okay, we're talking about. But, um, so I do have a question for you right off the bat, okay. beginning of the episode, uh, Rupert Thorne is like trying to escape from the cops on the rooftops, and we just see glimpses of Batman. Did you think, wait, is this is that Batgirl? Like, did you have that moment where you hadn't seen it in a long time and couldn't remember? Um, uh, no, not yet. Okay, because I was watching this like, is this a red herring sort of setup mm-hmm. where they're trying to make us think this might be Batgirl because they kind of deliberately tease just like the cowl and the cape and stuff like that. For uh, a bit. Well, they they do a great job playing with Shadow in the first part oh even the second part too that was mm-hmm. one particular shot that's oh it's so good um but no what i what i thought was funny with the rupert thorn thing was his like delayed reaction of realizing it's batman oh, yeah because he sees the shadow like, he obviously sees the shadow yeah. two or three times and he's like kind of running away and then he batman actually lands he's like oh my gosh it's batman like oh. who else would it be yeah who <laughs> well batgirl so we'll find out later yeah, yeah, we yeah, find out later so. it's batgirl I did enjoy that in the very beginning that the police actually do their job. They do, yeah. Because uh, I made a joke uh, that in the episode, they're like, oh, would you rather do this crime during the day so the cops would find us? I'm like, yeah. yes, I would so much rather do this during the day. Yeah. Because the cops don't hang you upside down. Uh, but they actually show up this time. Yeah. And then I had to like erase that joke. I'm like, oh, the cops <laughs> are actually here and they're actually doing something. Yeah, and and we are introduced to the deputy commissioner. Uh, was it Gil? Uh, I don't, Gil Fajan. Yeah, I think it's Gil. Uh, uh, who new cop? So clearly, he's going to be the villain. Yeah, <laughs> like that's, that's, I know. I paused it. I'm like, this name doesn't sound familiar. Did I forget? I at JCP or not JCPD? Um, GCPD. GCPD. Yeah. Uh, uh, I also love that it, he's voiced by Tim Matheson, who I fucking love. Tim Matheson. Mm-hmm. Do you know who that is? Nope. Have you ever seen Animal House? Gil Mason. I have. Is he? Um... He's Otter. So he's like the the pretty boy who mm-hmm. okay. bangs That's the dean's wife. Yeah, yeah. I watched that movie way too young as a child. Oh, me too. <laughs> oh, me too. Uh, I have still never seen The Sandlot, but I have seen what? Oh, The Sandlot's so good. But I saw Animal House and I was probably like ten. I yeah, I was probably like yeah, eleven or twelve when I saw it. Yeah, but no, he he's great and he was. Did you ever watch uh, um, Burn Notice? Uh, I have not. Okay. I've watched actually, every other, like, show USA similar show. to that. Mm-hmm. It's actually pretty solid, I think, save the last season. But Tim Matheson's in a, in a lot of episodes. He's really good. But anyway, okay. so, uh, new cop. Clearly, he's going to be the villain. And mm-hmm. we find out immediately that Gordon has uh, been accused of taking bribes from Rupert Thorne. He gets arrested. It's all a big hubbub. 
Um, I like that Bullock is really standing up for him. Like we see that he's, he's yeah. This he's, is he's like, like an softie. emotional Bullock episode. Yeah, he's a total dick to Batman later for no good reason. I mean, because he always is. He always is. But yeah, so he's um, you know he's kind of standing up for Batman. But they're having a rally to try and like throw support for Gordon and Barbara. Oh, hold on. We're skipping over one of my favorite moments. Oh, which one's this? The Dolly mustache. Oh, okay. Yes, this uh, all threw me later on. Batman doesn't want to uh, make an appearance as Batman because he wants to actually solve the the crime. Yeah, which, uh, mm. or solve the mystery. Yeah, which, yeah whatever. Yeah, a little little bit plot contrivance, but I'll forgive it. Uh, and so he puts on his um, matches matches Malone matches Malone yeah. costume, but a, a little tweak. He has the most beautiful Salvador Dali it's, pencil, like, straight out of the side of his face mustache. It is fantastic. Well, and, and, and he, I like, loved it. Yeah, he has, like, like, like a pronounced cheekbone sort of thing going on, too, right? Mm-hmm. Didn't Dali have, like, pretty big? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, I guess I didn't yeah. see any trivia for this, but it looks like it probably was a deliberate point, Oh, I'm right? sure it was, like, a straight-up jolly joke. Well, because I think even the hair, right? He's, like, slicked back hair off to the side. Yeah. Uh, I loved every. How did that I loved not pop so up much. on any of the trivia I read for this episode? I know like, clearly that the trivia for this episode was like the most boring. It's like first appearance of Batgirl. I'm like, well, no shit. Well, there was one that was like, this voice actor has the same birthday as um, as Val Kilmer, and I'm like, oh, that's something that I don't care about. Yeah, that doesn't matter at all. Oh yeah, that's yeah. There's definitely some Dolly esque things going on there. That's yeah. That's pretty awesome. Uh, oh, I loved it so much. Also, do you know he had a pet ocelot? uh <gasps> yeah just like archer <gasps> archer's oh, archer's is named uh what ba- not babu but... is it babu no <laughs> it's it's the same name it, it his os- <sighs> archer's ocelot is based uh exactly off of dolly's ocelot sorry i'm sure you guys can hear my computer going away here as i look up the name i'm this is gonna bother me because i should know this and whenever my brother listens to the episode he's gonna call me like babu it was, oh, it right. was babu. Yeah. okay yeah oh <sighs> Yeah, fun fun little art facts. <laughs> Not even art facts. I can't hate, I can't be mad at them saying, like, this person shares the same birthday if I'm going to throw out these unnecessary facts. But I, this is way more interesting. <laughs> I don't give a shit about Val Kilmer's birthday, but I very much care that Salvador Dali had an ocelot just like an archer. Yeah. Yeah, and everyone should, because archer's amazing. And it I'm is super great. excited for season eight. Mm-hmm. But moving right along. So, um, we have our first, like, legit act of terrorism. Yeah, it's, so, yeah, so they're doing this rally. Um, I still don't quite get why Batman can't show up. But I think part of the reason this doesn't work for me is that Batman disappears for a huge stretch of time. Mm-hmm. And, like, if they quickly established that he was going to do something specific, I think it would have been more on board. But it was just like, oh, no, I'm going to go off and try and get information as much as Malone. Instead, I'm like, ah, I feel like he needed to have a better excuse not to show up to support Gordon, who is always super supportive of him. Right. All the time. And... You know, when Barbara wants him to show up and make an appearance, like, he sends Robin, and it basically just would have been what Barbara ends up doing, dressed as Batman, which yeah. is, like, just swoop in, like... She, swoop in, show the... Show the yeah, cape. Pull the cape up. And go up, I'm yeah. Batman, it's and It's like, then she wanted him to, like, show up and, like, walk around and, like, schmooze with people and, like, get up there and make a speech. Like, he totally could have done that. Right. But I guess he can't, and that's why we get this great setup. I, I saw that as more of a, like... He can't do it because Superman would do that, and he's nothing like Superman. But he doesn't yet know Superman. I know, but that was my reasoning in my head. It's like, <laughs> it, he wouldn't dare do something that Superman would do. It would also would feel way too, like, 60s Batman, because like, that character would always just show up to, like, fundraisers in yeah. broad daylight and just go around and talk with people and do the bat tootsie. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't really work with this version of Batman. Yeah. But I also would have loved to see him just, like, shuffle around at a party and, like, shake hands. Yeah. It would be very weird. Well, uh, we, I have a fun 60s Batman fact that I'll mm. save for the end. Ooh, excellent yeah yeah but oh yeah and this is the moment where bulk's a total dick when like barbara's up there pretending to be batman and he's like oh you like the glory hog or something like what the yeah. fuck man like he's, why he's are you taking to... it away from jim's time he's here to help yeah god he's such a grumpy asshole but yeah there's uh, as you pointed out like an act of terrorism because there's no security no none at all at this event so two i mean to goons. be fair probably most of the people there are cops just yeah but you off. think that they would then also have security somewhere but yeah um so, yeah, Two-Face's goons show up and start shooting up the place. And, oh, yeah, we skipped over the fact that Barbara has gone and dressed up as Batman. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of an important <laughs> part of the scene. Showed up. Uh, yeah, so she's there, and also Robin is there. Yeah. Because uh, uh, Barbara swings in, shows the cape, and uh, Robin is very confused. She's like, I thought, yeah, Batman, like, wait, I thought you were undercover. What, what are you doing here? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the goons come in. Barbara kind of, like, half stops them. 
uh, and then is yeah. saved by Robin. They chase after their goons. Uh, they both get away. But she sees one of the guy's faces. Yeah. Very critical. Mm-hmm. Also, who uh, has like the weirdest. He's got like big, like, Bugs it, it's Bunny not, style It's not teeth. even upper teeth, it's bottom teeth. Is it? I thought, was it top and bottom? Is it it might have been. He had the weirdest, like, Bugs it's like Bunny. Like an beaver sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's, it's weird. But I, he's got to be, like, visually distinctive, I guess, to, for it to play out. But right. uh, I just do want to acknowledge real quick I love the Batgirl theme in this episode. Mm-hmm. It is so good. Um, especially because oftentimes we get kind of weird themes in this. I, I absolutely love this one. Um, but yeah, so, so Barbara has figured out like, oh, okay. Like I, she, she goes and looks through like the, um, like the mugshot book, mm-hmm. recognizes the guy, um, and goes to talk to Gil, AKA the guaranteed to be villain mm-hmm. who is of course talking. Gil Bayan. Yeah. With big tooth. Yeah. I don't know if he ever with, even with gets Bugs a name Bunny. with Bugs yeah. Bunny. Yeah, so Barbara figures out that Gil's a bad guy. And then separately, Robin has been watching like security footage of the event, and he sees that Gil ducked down at the rally for everyone else. Like, oh, this is a little bit suspect. I should go, should go check this shit out. Um, and only then do we finally figure out where the hell Bruce has been this yeah, entire time. Playing pool. Playing pool. And I, I forgot that that's what he looked like. Like, I forgot that he had... <laughs> How could you ever forget that mustache? Well, because, you know, normally when he puts on, like, makeup, it still kind of looks like Bruce, but with, like, just little touches here and there, right? right? But this looks like a completely different face. And so I'm like, wait, is that him playing pool? I legitimately did not remember until, like, he shows up at Two Faces Place and pulls out a grappling gun. Yeah. Which, also, I love this. So Robin's like, oh, why don't you take a, like an earpiece with you so we can stay in contact? He's like, no, that's too conspicuous. Yeah. So instead he takes one of Batman's grapple guns. But apparently just anyone can have that because Barbara has one as well. No, she doesn't. How, she swings in for the, for the cape thing. Yeah, but she, she doesn't <laughs> – that's no, fine. She doesn't have a distinct actual launcher. Like she, it, it's the same animation for like the claw, okay. but it's just a rope with a claw at the end. I think they actually showed <clears throat> it like in her apartment earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you're right. Everyone just – Yeah. I guess everyone just has one. Yeah. They're easily for sale at, <laughs> at any general store in, in Gotham. He probably buys it off a black market guy. Like we, yeah. Like we've established. Right. The black market grapple gun distributors of yeah. Gotham. Oh, they're everywhere. <laughs> Well, you got to have your normal grapple. You have to have your microphone launching grapple. You have to have your explosive launching grapple. Right. It's a, it's a very lucrative business. Yeah. Although the margins are very small. Those are expensive things to make. Yeah. But you sell a lot of them. High volume. Yeah. I mean, they're always like either getting broken by Batman yeah. or the villains are getting captured and new henchmen need them. Right. And apparently they're one and done. At least yeah. that's, that's implied in the second episode that after you fired it once, that's it. That's, that's all you get. Doesn't make any goddamn sense. Uh, but anyways, so wait, where was oh Bat- uh, he was Batman tails Bugs Bunny that's right uh, yeah. into Two Faces hideout mm-hmm. uh, but as he enters the not hard act system yeah. electrifies him uh, Two Face flips his coin it lands face down so Bruce has no good luck this episode and it nope. kind of ends right well it's there, like right? okay so we're gonna we're gonna kill you and then it cuts to Barbara who's like okay well if batman's not going to like solve this like i will and then she comes out and it's in her full batgirl costume mm-hmm. and i actually like that they give a natural evolution to her suit yeah. it starts out with her basically just trying to replicate as much as possible batman's look yeah so it's, it's the exact same as batman. yeah it's, it's basically without the logo different belt but yeah same gray suit gray exterior undies cape cowl gloves the whole thing mm-hmm. um and then when she is at the rally, like Robin goes to grab her and tears away the back of the mask and so her hair comes out. So that's like why her right. hair goes free and then she changes up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Do you like this Batgirl costume? Um, yeah, I like, the, I like the short cape. I don't know I do why, too. but I like it. I also have a quick question. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we first see her, she lands in the, in the suit. She's in the alleyway and she's pulling something out Shoulder of Shoulder pads. Seat. Is that, okay. Yeah. Which is weird because she has very distinctive shoulder pads, shoulders already. She does. And this was also the early 90s when, like, there like would have been... Shoulder pads were in. Yeah, shoulder pads were in. There would have been a lot of women's suits with shoulder pads. That's probably where she got them. She probably just, like, cut out of her own blazers. Yeah. Got those shoulder pads. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I saw I saw her reach something in her shirt and pulled it out. And then I guess the other things were padding in the shoes to make her taller. Yeah. Because she pulled something out of her boot. Yeah. Yeah, I... Because when she did that, I thought she was going to switch back to civilian gear. 
Because oh, I feel like that'd be a big yeah. thing for them to not understand of like, oh, Jim's on trial. Why isn't his daughter why here? Why isn't his daughter there? Mm. I feel like like there are so many holes in this, but that's not our job. There's a little just, bit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, yeah, this, unlike, say, like, Robin, she's also so desperate to tell anyone. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely true. Yeah. It, this is not as, uh, I say, flawless an ensemble piece as, like, uh, or as flawlessly assembled piece as Robin's Reckoning. Right. Still pretty good. But yeah, I, I, I think this Batgirl suit is okay. I very much prefer the redesigned suit, which is like the darker blue and black Mm -hmm. and like the stronger yellow accents to it. I think that's much more interesting. Yeah. And more aligned with like her original suit back in the day, like a lot of black and yellow and stuff. Um, But it's pretty good. But Mm -hmm. yeah, so we we end on that kind of cliffhanger, good cliffhanger point. Um, And then the next episode, oh, oh, it's like Robin and Batgirl both show up at Gil's place at the same time to invest in. Who, who is that? <laughs> what is that from? Um, uh, it's the Oh Hello guys, Nick Kroll and John Mulaney. Okay. John Mulaney's character is Gil Fajan. And I just love that name so much. And every every time he says anything. <laughs> it only took like you like saying it five times for me to finally ask. His, the real character's name is, J- is, is Gil Mason, but I like yeah, Gil Fajan Gil, better. No, it's fine. We, we have a long history of never using real names. Yeah. So... How's Cromwell doing? Is it Strom? No, Cr- Cromwell. Yeah, yeah. Strom. Cromwell's doing great. Stromberg. Uh, but yeah, so they both show up at Gil's place simultaneously, and they uh, they both find out that he's going off to a meeting with whoever's pulling his strings. So I guess this threw me for a bit too, because you know, so th- it's implied that Gordon's working with Thorne, but Thorne isn't the villain behind all this. It is, in fact, Two Face. That that threw me for a bit. Um, but yeah, so then they go off their separate ways to go and track him down, and he's. Meeting with Two Face at in the, oh, the subway station, yeah. like the old metro station. Yeah, and they also have Matches Malone there because they're going to kill him and talk to Gil. Well, know. they they brought him there because they wanted oh, Gil to right. see if they knew who this guy was. Yeah, it was, was like, like is an he a inform- cop? Yeah, is he an informant? Yeah. Why wouldn't they have immediately thought Batman? I don't know. Yeah, if they if they're going to the effort of thinking he might be a cop, you'd think they would be like, no, he's Batman. He's probably Batman. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Which they. So Robin is like sneaking around and like taking people out. That's pretty cool, actually. Mm-hmm. It kind of reminds me. I of I really films. enjoyed seeing Robin on his own, and I think yeah. it like really prepares us for Nightwing soon. Yeah. Uh, but it, it was nice to see him take on more of a leadership role. Yeah. I every time Robin's in this, the uh, episodes get elevated just every single time. Yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, so he's taking guys out, and then Batgirl's right behind him, but she gets tripped by a henchman, bumps into him. Everyone's like, "Oh shit, it's Robin!" And matches yells, "Robin!" They're like, oh, shit, it's Batman. Yeah, it's like, oh, fuck, you must be a Batman. Salvador Dali is Batman. (laughs) Oh, my God. How do we not make the connection? We should have seen this coming. (laughs) No one else is crazy enough to wear a bat suit. Except for Batgirl. Except for Batgirl, yeah. (laughs) She's just more of a fangirl, if anything. Do we count Man Bat? No, we don't count Man Bat. No, that's that's not a costume. That's 100% genuine bat right there. Yeah. (laughs) So... But yeah, so they um, Two Face and the guys like they uh, what, they set off a bomb which caves in the entrance and they oh yeah hang on Cameron's gonna close my my sliding door because someone's beeping I think the well, I think now the beeping's done though okay and I'm just spinning time here because I'm not gonna edit this out far far too lazy uh, every good show has good filler exactly <laughs> but yeah so they um. They're they're trapped down there, and then Two Face sets off another bomb that floods the subway. And I actually I remember that set piece. I think maybe because it was featured heavily in the intro for the Batman and Robin Adventures when they switched over. I think the next season. Mm-hmm. That's what I remember. But I always remember that set piece. It's a pretty good set piece, actually. Yeah, like having the water come in. So uh, the whole thing is flooding, and then Batman blows a hole in the roof. Mm-hmm. Could have done that. You skipped. Start. You skipped a two. Minor things that I want to bring up. What did I forget? Uh, how how uh, Bruce is way too comfortable just stripping in front of Batgirl. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because Robin's like, oh, here's your real suit. Mm-hmm. And he just starts. And she was like so excited. She was just staring at it. It's like, uh, oh, you got to put this on. You got to yeah. put it on for him, you big boy. Yeah. Uh, and, just pull up a chair and, and grab then a beer. He, it's the, yeah, I think it, I see it as a prelude to the next episode because he, he pulls out the chest and he's like, Excuse me, will you give us a minute? Oh yeah. So it's just a prelude to the the cow and no shirt. Oh, that's God, next that's episode, right? right? Um next episode is not, not not the for us it's the next episode, but technically blind as a bat falls in between them. Well you you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. 
but yeah, Batgirl, she, she, she's, she's digging what she's seeing, mm-hmm. understandably. Uh, and then also one of the things that I think is the funniest, like, lack of detective work. I, I can't even call it detective work. Uh, Batman is like, oh, I should have known it was t- uh, Two Face's oh, plan. My God, yeah. He's like, why? I was like, oh, because it's a two part plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, because he's the only one that can have a two part plan. Yeah, only him could think to go through and the, like take out the competing mob bosses and then also simultaneously like with this the is power. Of the many police. more steps than yeah. two parts, by the way. <laughs> <clears throat> do you think maybe two phases would have been a better word yeah do you think batman had an idea of who was behind it when he showed up to the, the hideout or do you think he was still in the dark i think that? he was still in the dark yeah. <laughs> wonder who this could be pulling the string what a weird shaped building huh mm-hmm. who else would live in a giant number two <laughs> i can't figure this out and the right side of it's all scarred that kind of reminds me of something but i can't put my finger on it I just hope it's not Matt Hatter again. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the it floods. Batgirl yeah. escapes through the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Um, but then Batman and Robin have the worst escape plan in the world. Oh yeah, they absolutely do. Oh, oh yeah. So then, like I don't know, like another wave comes through and they they get trapped. But, yeah, they they barricade themselves inside a subway car, That's which is already flooding. It's already yeah, partially flooded and continuing to flood. Yeah, because how okay. It, how does that work, their escape method? Because they, they pull the brake so that the thing rolls. Mm-hmm. Why is it rolling? I guess there was, there was enough water pressure. Because it, you saw when they were trying to get in, it was, it was a struggle for them to actually get yeah. in the car. But So I think there was just enough of a current to now, carry it. Here's the thing that doesn't make sense, though. So that The brakes would still work. Well, well Okay, so I'll, I'll give them they could release the brakes, and let's say then it's, it's more or less moving. Mm-hmm. A lot of inertia to actually get that thing moving. It's heavy. But if I recall, the water is flowing against the front of the car because that's what pushes them into it in the first place. And then it seems to get out because the water is pushing the back of the car. No, it, it's flowing from the back. They're entering from the back of the track. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Okay. Either way... It doesn't quite make sense because that thing somehow gains enough speed to break through a concrete wall yeah. at the end of the runway, which I, one would also assume there is probably, if it's a legitimate end of the track, there's probably things there to try and stop nah. a train, nah. maybe? That's way too safe for Gotham. Yeah, but it, it does. It, this whole segment kind of reminded me of the Thunderbirds show from the 60s. Like mm-hmm. They have so many episodes like that where it's like people are trapped inside of a subway car that's slowly filling with water. I was waiting for like Thunderbird 4 to pop in. Actually, <laughs> Thunderbird 4 is yellow. It kind of works. Um, but yeah, so they, they do bust out of the wall. And then uh, that part reminded me of Jurassic Park 2, which overall is not a great movie, but there's a great sequence when they're in like the um, like the surveillance van and it goes over the side of the cliff. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's just them just hopping off the top of it. Like it mm-hmm. seemed like there was actually kind of a few um, Spielberg esque kind of pulls in yeah. the way that thing was done, but it's it, it doesn't make any sense. But I kind of like it anyways. I also think this might be the most property damage that Batman has ever caused. I oh, mean, God, to be fair, yeah. it wasn't just him, but I don't know if even Bruce has enough money to fix an entire like. Uh, subway station was it a disused subway station though i yeah i guess I think so. it might have been which again why would you ever leave a s- subway abandoned in gotham yeah There's well that's so just like crime. a general like villainy hangout spot because that's also where the bang babies hang out in static shock mm. which i absolutely haven't started watching yet oh you bastard i, I haven't yet okay I'm just, I'm, it's, it's taking a lot of willpower i couldn't i really couldn't judge you I've watched a little bit of Batman Beyond as we've been doing this. <laughs> I'll acknowledge this. Um, but yeah, so they we also know that uh, Gordon, they're going to kill Gordon, so they bust him out of jail again, trying to perpetuate this idea that he's on Rupert's take. Um, and where do they take him? Where do they take him? Uh, just to the top of a building. Is that it? Yeah, they don't really specify where. Oh, no, they take him to the Mint. Oh my god! Oh no, they're on the docks. There's a giant coin. Yeah, yeah. Th- th- I think they take him to like the shipping docks, mm-hmm. right? And there's like the silver dollar. I guess I'm assuming that's it. I thought it was a mint. It could have just been like a museum. I, I think no. I think it might just be a, a name of a company that okay. handles in import exports. I think yeah, they are down at the docks. If they have wow. a giant Statue of Liberty, I just assume they also have their own. Oh, mint. that's right. They're on the water. Yeah. yeah, guys. I only watched this like two hours ago, and I've already forgot. 
<laughs> the ending was a little was a was a little, a little crazy. lackluster, but yeah. So they get out there and um, Batgirl saves Gordon. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. And as the guns are pointed at her, Batman and Robin show up. There's a little bit of flirting between Batgirl and Robin. I know it's adorable. It's it's pretty cute. It's actually pretty sweet. Oh, that's right. Because there's a great moment where uh, like Batman stands in front of the Hunchman, who's like throwing punches at him, like he's like trying to like intimidate Batman. And Batman just drop kicks him to the ground. Yeah. See Spielberg moment right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's that's pretty great. But then uh, what is it? They they capture Two Face and the Henchman. Gil tries to get away on a boat. Mm-hmm. Um, Batgirl jumps in after, catches yeah. a rope. Uh, pulls herself into the boat. Gil pulls the mask off of her. She had very little resistance. Very little, yeah. I, I think she wanted... This is why I said earlier that she wanted someone to know who she was. That's true. Well, and especially the, the final scene, we see very much of that, too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't, I don't really... I didn't really get the point of that was, of having him find out. Because then... Because, well, well, now he's in a coma. Well, that's the thing. It's like, oh my god, like a fucking coma. Like, I thought he was going to die. Well... And yeah. I'm like, you, you can't do that. That's why one of the Batgirls isn't Batgirl anymore, is because she killed someone. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie Brown? Uh, no. Um, oh, Cassandra Kane. Thank you. Yeah. Um, no, not even not Cassandra. Um, before uh, No Man's Land, Huntress becomes Batgirl. Yeah, but she didn't kill anybody. I thought she did. No. He kicked her out for, I guess, just like over aggressiveness. Yeah, I think she took it too far. Mm-hmm. You haven't read that, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's really good. I feel like I need because the past three episodes we've refer, we've referenced it's, you it. You know, it's, it's it's a weird story arc, but it's actually really really good. Yeah. At some point, I'll go home and I'll grab them. I'll bring them down. You can read them. Okay. They're pretty good. They're pretty fun. Um, but yeah, so he's in a fucking coma, which mm-hmm. seems like an extreme reaction. Yeah. But the the thing that makes no sense to me at all is so they're they're like celebrating that Gordon's back, and so he's at a press conference. Barbara's standing right behind him, and for some reason, Bruce and Dick are right behind her, mm-hmm. and. I think it was a Gordon makes a comment it's like, oh yeah, and like you know, and you know, a new bat has come to the city, and we're really happy about it. And Bruce and Dick are like, oh, I don't think we've seen the last of her. And Barbara's like, you can count on. It. And you're like, can't, you guys can hear each other. Like you're. Having... I like to think that it's two completely separate conversations well, that have has nothing to, to do with each other. It has to be because if it's the same conversation, they have just acknowledged to each other who they are. Yeah. Because there's no other way that conversation makes sense. Which isn't any the sense. first time he's done that. He did the same thing with the Grey Ghost. Well, but that, but they acknowledge that he, like, like the, the Grey Ghost, like, we have a moment where he acknowledges, okay, that is Batman. Where this, they play it like they don't realize it. Yeah. So it has to be two separate conversations. Because otherwise they would figure it out. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. Yeah. Um, it bothered me. I also like the, like, uh, the blatant, like, women's power moment where after Batgirl catches Gil, there's a nice pan up to a weird Statue of Liberty that has a giant shield. Oh yeah, like the Statue of Liberty knockoff. Yeah. Even though there's one that looks just like it, also in Gotham. Right. We saw in Vertigo. I I like to think there's just like two. A full horizon of like all of the all of the rejected Statue <laughs> of Liberties just got moved to Gotham. Or that they just they keep trying to like improve their image. They keep trying to build Statue of Liberties. Yeah, and they're they're either not satisfied or they get like partially destroyed during construction, and so they get just like, like a whole wall of them out across the massive harbor. Yeah, oh my God. Um, yeah, but I mean, I, okay, I nitpicked these episodes <clears throat> to death. Overall, though, I think they're actually a pretty solid introduction of Batgirl. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, um, and I I did a crap load of research on so specifically on Barbara Gordon's history more so than just. Batgirl. I okay. Mean, you said, you... I did a brief history of all of the Batgirls because I okay. didn't realize there were so many. There were five Batgirls. Yeah, because there was like a an associate of Batwoman's like way back in the day. It was like Bat like Dash Girl who's in it for like mm-hmm. a couple episodes or a couple things. But then this version of Batgirl was specifically created because of the TV show that they mm-hmm. wanted a third season. They wanted Batman to have a like a female counterpart. <clears throat> so the producers basically approached DC Comics like, can you create a female character for Batman to work with. Mm-hmm. That was my fun fact, by the way. Oh, it was? Yeah. Swoot. Thanks for tailing, Thanks Swoot. for checking that for me. Oh, my God. Cameron, I have, <laughs> I, have so, I have so many fun facts about Batgirl here. Go for it's it. It's a long-ass list. Jump in. So they they um kind of unveil her simultaneously. So she appears in the show, played by Yvonne Craig, and they also introduce her in Detective Comics number 359 in January of 1967. And I love this. So in the comic, uh, she is on her way to a costume ball dressed up as a female version of Batman. She was the first gender bending cosplayer. Brilliant. Fucking love it. I always love me a good gender bend cosplay. And 
on the way, she uh, foils a kidnapping of Bruce Wayne by Killer Moth, who I guess back in the 60s was actually considered a real threat. Yep. <laughs> Rather than just the, the cartoonish buffoon that he's portrayed in and everything else. Um, and so she, there's, I didn't, there was like a couple, I mean, all crazy stories, like all through the 60s with her, right? But I guess at one point she actually retired and became a U.S. representative. I didn't know that. Yeah, I actually didn't know that either until I was looking it up. Um, and they specifically wrote her to not just be a romantic foil or a damsel in distress, which the like the previous bad girl and bad woman had been. Although, let's be honest, that all kind of got thrown out the window because her most famous story arc is The Killing Joke, which isn't even about her at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's interesting is that, I mean, so I think everyone pretty much knows this, but in the story, she's paralyzed purely for the purpose of the Joker getting at Gordon, and it's just a plot device. And Moore has actually acknowledged that he regrets doing that because... It just, it's not even about her. That it was a very kind of casual, like, oh, just shoot her and use her as a plot device. You, you, you've heard the term fridging a character? No. So where it comes from is years later, actually, uh, your favorite Green Lantern, Kyle Rayner. Yeah, Kyle. His girlfriend is uh, chopped up and put into a fridge. Huh. And he discovers her. And so it's, the term used, it's kind of like um, jumping the shark. But in this case, it's the term used to describe a, a female character who is used solely for the purposes of setting up a story arc for a male character okay in comics mostly Mm -hmm. and so that this was kind of like the most famous example of that a little bit did you did you have you seen the movie yet i have watched the movie okay i think they make it even worse in the movie i think you know because instead of it just being about gordon like a plot device for gordon they try and make it an even worse damsel in distress plot device for batman i think if they had cut out her literally fucking Batman on a rooftop, I think it would have been okay if they set her up as actually generally wanted to go out there and make a difference and be a hero, and she's the private of that and then Mm -hmm. finds a way back as Oracle. That's an interesting arc. But yeah, they really didn't help themselves on that one. Right. Yeah. I didn't, and I just didn't love that, the thing overall. I also never really loved that story that much, though. Yeah. It was, it was kind of the first big comic that I read, and so it 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 was pretty monumental for me. Yeah. I think I read it around the time that Dark Knight was coming out because I like went back and read a lot of the stuff that was a big pull for Nolan when he created it. But yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't really love that story. I get why it's kind of definitive, but I don't think it lands that well. Um, but so what's interesting is uh, there was another comic book writer and editor, Kim Yale, who was also super unhappy about what happened to Barbara. Mm-hmm. So she and her husband, John Ostrander, who he restarted the Suicide Squad and made it the ones with the villains, rather than like good old Task Force S back in the day. Uh, they deliberately brought Barbara back out of obscurity by introducing her as Oracle. Nice. I didn't know she started out in Suicide Squad, actually. Oh, I didn't either. That's yeah. kind of awesome. Yeah, so she was in uh, Suicide Squad number 23 in January of 89, and then teamed up with Black Canary later on, like a one-off called Birds of Prey, which then became its own series. Yep, a one-season show on... Yeah, uh, WB. I actually watched all of it. It was terrible, but it was kind of fun. Yeah, I, I watched the theme song. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's bad, though. Yeah. That's what bad is it. There was one kind of cool episode where um, Lady Shiva comes into town. I think it was Lady Shiva, and they have like, she and Batgirl had a history, mm-hmm. and Lady Shiva basically calls her out, and so Barbara has to go as Batgirl to confront her. Um, and so she puts on the old suit, and she had developed a device that gave her like some kind of control of her legs so that oh, she could like cool. steer her chair without her hands. But then they modified it further so she could like kind of walk around a little bit. And one, the, the back suit they use is really cool. Cause it was basically the back suit from Batman and Robin, but actually painted the right way. <laughs> so black with the yellow accents, it's live action wise, at least I think the best version I've ever seen of it. Okay. Um, but overall yeah, that show is fucking terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then now in the new 52, she has her mobility back. That I guess she went and had some sort of like experimental surgery in like South Africa, but it's still part of the character. She still went through that experience, and that's like a trauma for her. Mm-hmm. And when they did that, there was a bit of a backlash because I I didn't really realize this, but there was I guess there was a long debate always about Barbara that um, with her being paralyzed, you know, some people thought that was good because they took a disabled character and really made her incredibly strong and a huge part of the DC comics actually. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I think when I mean, growing up aside from the animated series, I usually saw her mostly as Oracle. Same. Yeah. Like in the comics and in the Arkham games too, she's Oracle. And like, mm-hmm. she kind of really came back from this horrible event and became a really strong, important, powerful character and a huge influencer in the stories. 
But a lot of people also said, well, how is it that she's still in a wheelchair in this world where there's magic and advanced technology and stuff? Um, but they, I guess their defense when they changed it was they really wanted to have the original spirit of Batgirl back. Like they wanted to be able to play with that version of the character again, which I, I kind of get. Mm-hmm. And to be fair, I think the stuff they've done with her since then has been pretty good. Like have you read uh, Batgirl of Burnside? Uh, I have not. Okay, yeah, that's one of my bat plugs for the week. It's actually, okay. it's pretty solid. I have it. I should, I should give it to you. Um, yeah, I'm kind of glad she's back. I think of of the bat girls that I read about, she's the one that best fits the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, because all the other ones, like she's like she just fits so well into the characters. Like she's relate. She relates. I mean, obviously, she's Jim Gordon's daughter. Yeah. And Jim Gordon plays such a huge role in this. It's nice to have her play a role. Because all the other ones that I read, like, obviously I don't have an extensive knowledge of the other characters. Yeah, because uh, the uh-huh. second Batgirl... Well, the second Batgirl was um, Huntress. Yeah, well, if we're going in order, the first Batgirl, what, the right. Bat okay, Dash yes. Girl, was yeah. Sandra Kane. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, who, um, who was that the character... niece of... Batwoman. Niece. Okay, yeah. So in the the Batwoman reboot, there is a character, Cassandra Kane, who is Batwoman's cousin, but she plays a different character. She's not it's like Firebird or something. It's not, yeah. So yeah. so she had a, a very interesting story. <clears throat> um her and her aunt <clears throat> excuse me. Are Batwoman in the on the early in the forties comics. Yeah. I think it's Kathy Kane, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um through the sixties and then she dipped and then she had a uh, not a big role, but a, a role in Crisis, Crisis of Infinite Earths. Uh, Wait, which? Oh, Crisis of Infinite back in the day, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. The, the first big world breaker. Yeah, um, where she died and then came back as fire, as not Firebird, but something similar to like that, Flamebird or yeah. something. Basically, yeah, basically, I think they wanted their own their own version of Phoenix. Oh God. Um. Yeah. So it's Phoenix with a Batman twist, of course. Like, um. So then, yeah, so that ended in 64 is when she stopped. Mm-hmm. Then, obviously, as he said, 67, we had Barbara come in. Um, Barbara lasted forever. And then, yeah, uh, Killing Joke happened. Then about 10 years later was when uh, Helena Bur- Bertinelli. Bertinelli, thank you. Yeah, Huntress. So, yeah, so basically, because I, I, I remember these because I've read them. Yeah, so uh, after No Man's Land, Batman disappears for a really long time. The city is left in chaos, and a Batgirl appears in a completely different outfit. Mm-hmm. And we eventually learn that it's Huntress. Yeah. Um, and Batman has kind of known all along who it is. Because well, he's Batman. He's Batman, yeah. And I, do you, does it say, do you remember what his reason really was for stopping her? It's like, I think she did go too far. I or... think, yeah. I don't think she killed, but she was like too aggressive with one of the, one of the villains. Okay, yeah. Because at the same time that this is going on, Batman has met uh, Cassandra Kane, who is a the mute daughter of David Kane, an assassin who I think was there to kill Batman. Yeah. Whatever. She's the daughter of two assassins. Oh, and is, who's the other? Is it Lady Shiva? Is her mom or who's I her mom? I think I don't. I don't remember. They said it in whatever I read. I don't, but I don't remember anymore. Yeah, but so then she becomes. He points her as the third Batgirl, mm-hmm. and I forget why she stopped. I don't really know much about her. Oh, uh, she run. kind of hasn't. So that's what I like her. I I'm really curious. I want to read about her story. Yeah, uh, is she still Batgirl though? Because then Stephanie Brown became Batgirl. For yeah. A while. So what happened is um, Cassandra Kane came in, and she was meant to be kind of the rival slash equal of Tim Drake. Um, yeah, well, uh, there's his girlfriend. Wait, yeah. no, sorry, not... No, uh, Stephanie Brown was not Cassandra Kane, right? Yeah, yeah uh, Cassandra. Uh, so as she, like, developed being Batgirl, she left the mantle um, a, a few years before Tim Drake left <clears throat> and moved to Hong Kong, where Batman later found out that she was still being a vigilante Oh, okay. When Bat, this is kind of more recent stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Batman Inc. was happening, he appointed her as like the Batman of Hong Kong. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, and so she she has a, a. I sent you. I I meant to post this on our page, but I sent you like the. So you don't even know how, do you? I do. I know how to fucking <laughs> use. A, I run. <laughs> I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but yeah, that, what you sent me was awesome. Yeah, it was uh, a very cool like. Um, Chinese Is it Batman uh, of Shanghai. Yeah, it was called Batman of Shanghai. It came out a few years ago, but it was like a uh, almost a watercolor at, or like a it's not watercolor. It's, it's very well. It's yeah. Uh, Batman doing awesome kung fu. Yeah, with Bane and Catwoman. Yeah, so good. Um, but his co- or her costume as the new like Batgirl slash Batman 
is similar to like Catwoman's costume from that video. Mm-hmm. It's just like a face mask. Um, it looks like a ninja costume. Oh, okay. I'm it look looks it cool. I like it. So while she's over there doing that, Stephanie Brown comes in. Stephanie also known for being the only female Robin after yeah, Tim Drake drip. Exactly. She was spoiler back in the day and then yeah. kind of died but kind of didn't. Because she's also the daughter of a villain. Clue Master. Thank you. David uh, Brown. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to steal all your ideas. No, that's fine. I didn't, I didn't write that one <laughs> down. Um, yeah, so she was spoiler because she would just ruin all of her dad's like plans. Oh, that's which right. Which I think is hilarious about why that's her name. Um. And yeah, so when Tim dropped out, she became uh, ba- or, uh, Robin, and there was so much negative fan backlash that like she w- was immediately replaced. Oh, uh, and then well, I mean, she's now still um, spoiler. She still has a couple stories popping up. Yeah, because she's not uh, Batgirl anymore. Right. I'm trying to find the. No, I can't find. I'll, I'll look later. I'm trying to find the. Uh... What is this? Great, great audio work here. But is that the Hong uh, Kong? No. no I'll okay. find a photo for you later. Okay. <clears throat> I was trying to find a photo of the Hong Kong Batgirl. But. Um, but yeah, those are the other. And then, obviously, at that point, it was the New 52 reboot. And that's yeah. when uh, Barbara brought, was back. Yeah, brought Barbara back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I I, um, I really like that the, when they did the... So I, I like her New 52 suit, too, which is, again, like a more modern version of like the black and yellow. It's very similar to the outfit she had in the uh, the downloadable content for Arkham Knight. Mm-hmm. You played... You played those. Right? Oh, I've played all of them. Yeah, so all of those games. Um, and then I like her Batgirl Burnside, which is like the the purple like leather jacket sort of look. Like it's very it's very clearly inspired by the 1960s, mm-hmm. but it's like it had a nice kind of modern feel to it. And that that run is actually pretty fun. Um, it's a nice contrast from like everything being so dour and dark, <laughs> which even in the Batman comics happens a lot. Right. Um, I never read the second volume. I don't know if it's any good. I don't know. Yeah, but I, really- I need, I want after doing this research, I really want to dive into Bat or Batgirl stuff. No, I mean she's super interesting. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's and she's incredibly popular too. I mean, I, I remember I had the same listing for for Robin back in the day for Dick Grayson, but uh, she was ranked 17 as both the top 100 comic book characters and also sexiest women in comics. Nice, yeah, good for her, yeah, pretty good. Um, That's saying a lot, beating out like Power Girl and uh, did I don't know if she beat out Power Girl though. Oh, 17th on most attractive. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, not number one. I think that oh, okay. Was Cat- I don't remember who that was. Might have been Catwoman. I don't remember. I don't know. Whatever. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, she's been in the animated... I honestly, it was probably Wonder Woman. Oh, it might have been. I don't even remember. But yeah, so she's been in the animated series and like... Um, oh, she's in Young Justice, too. Yes. Yeah. First is Barbara, and then the what, second season, they bring her in as Batgirl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, she is an awesome character. Mm-hmm. Um, I am excited for the the potential movie. Yeah, here. Oh, so sorry. Before we jump into the movie, mm-hmm. um, I I know neither of us have really uh, watched a lot of this series, but my first time seeing Batgirl on TV was the Batman. Oh, and, yeah. And she has. It's still. I want to go back and rewatch these two episodes because it's such a cool story. Because it's three Batgirls. It's Barbara, Cassandra, and St- I think Stephanie. Uh, cause That's... it's the, cause it's the three hair colors. Cause what? yeah. Cause Barbara's redhead. That's Stephanie's not... blonde. In the Batman? I'm pretty sure. No, not in the Batman. In the Batman, she's introduced in the beginning of season three and she's best friends with Poison Ivy. Then what? Was it Beware I... the Batman? No, because I saw this years ago. I was hoping it was the Batman. I guess no, I didn't research enough. I know I mean... there's some story. There's, I remember seeing it. Of the three of them, and they would interchange the costumes so Batman couldn't figure out who she was. Oh, okay, okay. What is that from? Mystery of the Batwoman. Is that what it is? Okay. Yes, and we we will be getting to that later on. I, I think it's not technically... It's like a weird, like, Bruce Tim. I don't really think was involved, but it's technically kind of part of the universe. Okay. But yeah, that's when there are three different women who are interchanging, playing the role of Batwoman. But she's got, like, mm-hmm. a, uh, like a gray and, like, pink... Bat suit, right? I the only scene I like vividly remember is the three of them. It's an aerial shot, and the three of them running on a rooftop. Um, oh, sorry, guys. Hang on. I'll just edit this out. Probably, probably won't. We edit nothing. Yeah. Should we just pause and go grab him? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Are we back? Yeah, we're back. Okay, so. <laughs> 
Sorry, we had we, we had to go. I had to go let our, let our friend in here. Um, so we're gonna wrap this up real quick. So uh, I guess one quick thing: we do have a movie coming out. Yes, Joss Whedon's gonna be directing it. We talked about this last week. Yes. Quick little interesting thing: there has been a big backlash. Uh, not a big backlash, but a backlash against this. Because no one can be happy with anything right now. No one can be. And I get where it's coming from. But basically, it's people are upset that yet another uh, female superhero is going to be directed by a male director. And I am a huge advocate for like better representation in film and getting more like people of color and women directing. And I would normally be right alongside these people being upset. But it's just it's Whedon. Just Whedon like, I feel like if we can give one... Forgive one white guy for wanting to make a movie with a female hero. It's the guy who directed Buffy. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I, again, white guy, probably not the best person to talk about this, but I really think that he has been a huge factor in putting incredible female characters on screen. I mean, back to the original movie with Buffy and then the TV show. I mean, you know, even you looking at the way he dealt with, like, Black Widow in The Avengers, too. Like, she is... As much of a badass, if not more so, than mm-hmm. everyone else around her. So, I don't know. I'm I'm really torn on this because I, I normally would be upset about this too. But it's Joss Whedon. Yeah. Uh, other white guy chiming in here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in case you guys couldn't tell, we're incredibly white. Yeah. Um, uh, and even like even non female, like you said with Avengers, even non female centered shows, he knows how to write women to not just be either damsels or objects. Like in yeah. Firefly, all the women were awesome in that show yeah it's i mean yeah everyone go watch firefly yeah i don't know so i'm 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 torn i think part of it for me too is i i just want a really good dc movie and i feel like he's the best hope we have right he's now. he's our for last one. chance not that someone else couldn't do it and do an incredible job but like he he's a proven track record so i don't know we're hopeful on that one but we'll we'll, we'll see yeah um but i think from there we should get into our, our bat plug so i've basically already mentioned the two of mine uh, one of which is batgirl burnside the comic mm-hmm it, I basically treat it as a one-off. It's a real fun story. Um, it's got like Black Canaries in there, and it, I don't know. It's just it's it's different. It has a cool kind of modern vibe to it. I really recommend that. And then of course I mentioned earlier, the Thrilling Adventure Hour, which uh, was a live show in L.A. for ten years, and then it's also been a podcast. So they they still do occasional shows. Cameron and I got to go to one for their yeah. Christmas episode. It's it's great. I it was as someone who had never watched it or heard it before. It was great. Yeah. So it's um. I mean the. It's Ben Acker and Ben Blacker for our, our comic book fans out there. Some of you guys might recognize some of their other work. I think they've written for like Deadpool and stuff. Um, but yeah, they they basically do the whole thing is in the style of old time radio. So it's a live radio play. Everyone's standing up on the stage reading scripts. Um, but it's like uh, Paul of Tonkins, Paget Brewster, Janet Varney, for Janet any Varney, Avatar fans yeah, out there. Um, yeah, she's in there. Mark Evan Jackson. Uh, this incredible cast of people. One of my favorite podcasts of all time. It's basically wrapped up at this point. There's tons of episodes. They're really, really fun. Uh, so that is one of my, my plugs this week. Go nice. check that out. So it, it sounds like you have quite a bit. So what do you, uh, what do you have, Cameron? Oh, I have. I mean, we, we already talked about Judas Contract. Yeah. Um, my big plug, just because he's my favorite writer in comics, um, Brian Lee O'Malley just had a new series startup called Snot Girl. What else has he done? Scott Pilgrim. Ah, oh, yes. Scott of Pilgrim Seconds uh, and Lost in Sea are his three other big stories. Okay. Um, but Snot Girl just started, and it's very. I have no idea where it's going or yeah. even how to explain it without spoiling it. But it, you basically follow this um, fashion blogger as she's trying to deal with life. He's he's very good at like just writing casual life stories, mm-hmm. um, opting out Scott Pilgrim, but both Lost at Sea and Seconds are are pretty good. Like normal people that just have like one little thing go strange oh, interesting. Uh, and so yeah, that's kind of what this story is okay um, did you pick it up at wondercon mm-hmm. and stuff oh awesome yeah uh and i'm super excited to see where it goes mm-hmm. uh the first issue just came out about a month ago Sweet. so i recommend everyone go pick that up because uh you know support scott pilgrim writers um i started reading invincible finally i've had oh, the first 10 yeah. issues sitting on my shelf for months now how is it i love it yeah it it feels like like starting Superman up again. It's it's okay. nice. It has a weird like I think I've talked about this before. I'm a huge fan of Sky High. Mm-hmm. Uh and it has like a weird like connection to that movie. Oh, which I, really I, I think I know what you're talking about on that. Yeah. Um and then uh saw Ghost and Shell, which is okay. Mm-hmm. It's very pretty, but that's about it. 
Uh, and then for any anime fans out there, which I know is maybe one person, uh, My Hero Academia started back up this week. I fucking still on the superhero rant. It's like, I mean, it's basically a Japanese sky high. Okay. It's a school for superpowered people. Okay. Um, so it's like X-Men. No, not like X-Men. Like okay. Sky High. Okay. <laughs> um, and it's just so much fun. And it's like everything is so over the top. And it's very well. It's another Shonen series. Anime fans know what that means. Okay. Yeah. This is all going way over my head. I'm uh, literally just staring at you. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. I uh, The first season is, I think, dubbed on Hulu. Okay. So I recommend checking it out because it's so much fun. Oh, it's a show. Yeah. Sorry. It's a show. Season oh, okay. two just started back up. Okay. Um, you're gonna have to like send me these things. I don't know what the fuck they are. We have to put them in the plugs. That's fine. Yeah, I don't mean to give you this much more work. Gotcha, but, yeah, yeah, right. but uh, for all the stuff, it's not girl. Everyone go check that out. It's great. Okay. Yeah, and I don't think I can actually plug Judas Contract because I don't think it's actually out yet. Uh, yeah, I, th- I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to. I'm lazy. Nah, that's fine. <laughs> so. But yeah, so I think that uh, does it for us this week. I realized that I forgot to put in a break earlier between parts one and two for our ah, that's fine. Our, our sponsor. But as sure I do, it'll fit as I do, whatever as always, uh, I forget to do that. We'll just we'll just tack it there on the end. I'm not sure who it is, but I'm sure their podcast is great, guys. Yeah, you should totally go check it out. Um, and of course, if you want to reach out to us, uh, we are at Tim Talk Pod on Twitter and Instagram and a Facebook. Yep, I am at Lordifer. I'm at Cameron Dexter. Yeah, and uh, we'll be back next week with. The Demon's Quest, I think is the name of the episode. Yeah. But it's Raz al Ghul. We're going to have a so... big, long argument about Raz versus Raish. Oh, my God. Get well, ready for an hour and a half conversation. Why don't we just do what Arrow does and have some people say it one way and other people say it the other way? Yeah. Why can't we just have some detente here with our, our Raz versus Raish camera? Nope, because we need a fight. That's true. We haven't had a good fight in a while on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, I missed that day. We'll, we'll come back to it. We'll come back. <laughs> but uh, until then, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, guys. I'm Paul Lair, and I've got anger issues. Convenient fees on Live Nation, that pisses me off. People who drive slow in traffic, that pisses me off. Dropping things, that pisses me off. So what do I do to manage my anger? I have a podcast called Say Anger, where I have a guest on every week. They tell me what makes them angry, and then it's like this little therapy session. It'll help you out. It sure as hell helps me out. So help me help you by subscribing to the Nerdist School Network. The Nerdist School Network. For class and show information, visit nerdistschool.com.